Hi and welcome. I find myself off the impressive coast of the island of Møn in southern Denmark. This natural environment is one of a kind with its more than 37 million year old cliffs, a unique biodiversity and an abundant pantry full of quality ingredients and quite importantly most of them are organically grown. I hope to catch or in some way get hold of Baltic Sea codfish with roe, the reason being that I've got a few cut tricks I'd like to show you. There are other ways of getting to the beautiful beach at the base of Mönch Cliff. You can, as me, arrive on horseback. In addition to codfish, I show you a few crisp, vibrant winter drinks and a nice salad of goat meat, blue cheese and cabbage. In reality, Mönch Cliff is a huge mountain of chalk created by the limestone shells of octopi, sea urchins, mosses and algae that were stored at the bottom of a tropical sea that covered most of northern Europe 75 million years ago. When the glaciers of the Ice Age plowed over Moon, they pushed the approximately 100 meter thick sheets of chalk up from beneath the surface. Thanks to the thick layers of limestone beneath my feet and because this area has been nearly untouched by man for centuries. This is the single place in Denmark where you find the largest number of plant and animal species. More than 300 of them are rare or even endangered. Orchids grow here in summer, a delicate and exotic plant that loves the limestone rich soil, but may seem completely out of place as it doesn't grow anywhere else in this chilly region. These vegetables, the carrots, the green cabbage and uh, the beetroot have been harvested right before the frost. They have thus been sitting in the soil of Moon for more than seven entire months. They have reached complete maturity, they are packed with secondary compounds and uh, they are bursting with sweetness. What I'm going to do now is to turn them into a wonderful veritable vitamin bomb a juice. When you use your juicer, always add the most uh, coarse and uh, fibrous vegetables first and the more juicy and porous ones afterwards. In that way you get by far the best extraction. Look at that color. Cabbage has always played a crucial role in the Nordic diet, especially in wintertime. Members of the kale family can withstand frost and they're also rich in vitamin A, B and C. Therefore, people living in the countryside did not contract the same diseases related to malnutrition as people from the cities. Cabbage is a rather bitter vegetable, so now we take uh, an apple for fruitiness and sweetness. This is too good to be true. But I can make it even better by adding a little bit of warm ginger. So this foamy little thing is a juice of green cabbage, winter apples and ginger. And if you want to turn it into a drink, then just add a couple of ice cubes and a splash of gin. Enjoy. The second juice will be composed of uh, beetroot, winter apples and uh, horseradish. Let's peel this one. And if you wonder 
what all this uh, heat is all about then. It is so that uh, certain ingredients such as chili, ginger, horseradish and for instance wasabi contain certain microscopic compounds that uh, actually stimulate your tridimensional sense, your sense of pain and uh, as we all know a little bit of pain enhanced pleasure. Oh my god. Hej. Hej. <laughs> Hvad var det her? Hvad lavede til dig? Det ser dejligt ud. Du har sådan en ordentlig, ordentlig bandit her. Ja, bare giv mig et ordentligt squirt i. <laughs> Skål. Tak for rideturen. Selv tak. Jeg skal prøve at smage en grønne også. <laughs> en, <laughs> to og tre. Ah. At this time, the 12,000 Moen residents are true pioneers. There is a vast array of farm stores and there are few places in the world where I have seen such a large variety of homegrown vegetables. The local store in the small town of Lendemark has one of the largest selections of organic products of any Danish supermarket. Meter upon meter of shelves full of organic foods, completely free of pesticides and artificial fertilizers. You can buy organic meat, apples, pears, potatoes and various root vegetables and even garlic. I love the mild aromatic meat from goat, and it fills me with a deep pleasure to cook with truly local foods. I have always wondered why we so thoughtlessly import ingredients from the other part of the world where there are locally based foods right at our fingertips which are fresher, with a special history and a unique taste. It's a logical idea and it is also completely necessary in a time where the world is facing enormous environmental problems, not least due to the growth of the transport industry. Everybody loves a classic roast leg of goat, but it takes some time to cook it and uh, you need an oven. So what I'm going to show you now is how to split it into its four distinct muscles and uh, it may sound a little complicated and of course you can have your butcher do it for you, but actually it is quite easy. First of all, use your fingers. Always work with the tip of the knife. So here are my, my four muscles. I want to choose two beautiful cuts to uh, fry slowly in the pan uh, in order to be part of this wonderful crisp January cabbage salad with uh, roasted hazelnuts, blue cheese and uh, a nice little marinade with uh, green cabbage. Some people call it a disaster to um, season the meat with salt and pepper before frying, but uh, on the contrary, the salt will drag out some of the meat juices and this will only help the caramelization process. And when it comes to the pepper, it absolutely needs the heat in order to be woken up. You can fry the goat in olive oil, 
butter, even goat butter, but uh, today I use cold pressed rapeseed oil. Five minutes on each side and it'll be beautiful. I need some peeled roasted hazelnuts for my salad and it is a nightmare to try to cut them with a knife, so just to squash them with a casserole. Now to the salad. Let's start with the endive. The heart of the endive is rather bitter, so I always leave a part of it aside. And now a little bit of this beautiful frise salad. I always, if I have the choice, take the inner leaves. They are more juicy and sweeter and also more beautiful. And now to the dressing. Some cold-pressed rapeseed oil. One third apple cider vinegar. A few spoons of uh, green cabbage juice. And this you have to do in the very end, just before serving the salad, because otherwise the wonderful emerald color of the green cabbage juice will be broken down by the acidity in the vinegar. Salt, a little bit of sugar. And now for the blue cheese. The Danish Dana Blue has its roots in uh, Roquefort, however, it is made with milk from cows, not sheep. Myos Bull was the first dairyman to start up a production of uh, Danish Blue almost 100 years ago. He experimented a lot and uh, the first original Dana Blue was born in the late 1920s. Export to UK and uh, to USA started in the 1930s. For my salad, I want some coarse pieces of uh, blue cheese. If, however, you want to use it for a cheese board, then just take a thin bladed knife, dip it in boiling water, and then you will get the finest slices. In order to protect Dana Blue against the imitation, it has been given a AOC by EU. This means that uh, Dana Blue must be produced in Denmark and uh, only according to strict requirements. By the way, wouldn't it be nice with some of this beautiful purple Brussels sprouts? At least I think so. Normally you would boil Brussels sprouts, but uh, if you just chop them finely, then they are wonderfully crisp in any salad. If you've got some parsley, some dill or some sage, it's also wonderful because of the aromas. But if it is windy like here, you need to chop a lot. It is so juicy. Enjoy. Mm, it's nice. The Baltic Sea, which surrounds Moon, is a unique ecosystem. It is one of the world's largest brackish seas. Fresh water flows into the Baltic Sea from rivers in Sweden, Finland and Eastern Europe, while salt water only flows into it from the streams of Denmark and the water remains here for up to 30 years before it is renewed. There are fewer species here than in many other marine and ecosystems, but still fishing takes place in a quite large scale. The most common fish are codfish, plaice, lumpsucker, 
uh, herring and eel. As you see, the fishermen here use the ancient system of pound net fishing, where the fish actually swim into the net, which is lying on the ocean floor. One of the main advantages of this system is that uh, the small fish, they get a second chance, and the big fish, they are very much alive. From January to March, our codfish virtually bulge with roe and their flesh is firm and delicate. In the same period, our late harvested winter leeks are loaded with sweetness and aroma. So this is what cooking is about today in January, namely codfish and leek. I'll teach you how to steam the codfish fillet so that it preserves its juiciness and so that we enhance its mild aromatic tones. I'll show you two ways to prepare leeks and uh, eventually you'll see how we can fry the codfish roe so that it turns brown and nutty without losing its wonderful moistness. But uh, let's begin with uh, the codfish fillet that, uh, that poses a challenge. The trick is to even out the differences. You stop the process here and actually separate the flesh from the skin. Cut through it. Then you just score the flesh like this. And now it's easy to fold it. Whoop. And now you have a wonderful even codfish fillet. I just salt it a little. Now we cut it in equal portions. And leave it for 10 to 15 minutes. Now let's have a look at the roe. What's very important about the codfish roe is that uh, it does not get into direct contact with the boiling water. If it does, it uh, may turn inside out. And uh, therefore, wrap it firmly. And I remember to boil them five minutes and leave them another few minutes in the water before uh, cooling them down. Now let's have a look at the leeks. So the correct way to um, clean it and uh, make it ready for cooking is to slice it up the way you want it to be, and then rinse it afterwards. The green part, we're gonna use it for steaming the codfish, and uh, with the whiter part, I'm gonna make the sauce. Now let's make the sauce. So now the butter has melted and it is time to add the leeks. And uh, make sure that uh, they just sweat slowly. They should not caramelize. Then we add a few sprigs of thyme. In France, they would have used uh, white wine vinegar and white wine to give uh, fruitiness and acidity to the sauce. But in Denmark, we use uh, apple cider vinegar and apple juice. Approximately two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and uh, 100 grams or one TCD of apple juice. And then you let it reduce until it is reduced to half. Now you add two tablespoons of uh, strong mustard. A little salt. And finally, the cream, 100 
milliliters or 100 grams. And now just let it reduce slowly until the sauce is uh, beautiful and creamy. Now let's have a look at the codfish roe. I just break it and then I remove the netting of fat or the membrane or whatever you call it in your country. And as you can see, it's, it's still raw in the middle, but that is on purpose. Now my task is to fry it so that it becomes brown and caramelized and nutty on the outside, while still remaining its moistness in the inside. A little salt. And some pepper. Just uh, flip them over and give them another two minutes on the other side. It smells wonderful. Now let's steam the codfish. You add the leeks and the codfish. Always uh, leave the skin on the codfish fillet because not only does it retain the juices in the flesh, but also it is a perfect indicator of when the fish is done. When you can easily peel it off, the fish is ready. Over the last 4,000 years, the sea has attempted to recapture the limestone, creating the cliff. Every year, the sea eats up 20 to 40 centimeters of the cliff, and landslides are common. I'm actually standing on one of the landslides that was created last year. Staying here is at one's own risk. Now let's have a look at the cut. It's perfectly done. And now it's time to arrange the food. And you know what? I found in one of the vegetable gardens this beautiful, fresh winter herb, Macedonian parsley. I just chop it finely and uh, then mix it with fresh, juicy winter apples. And I can assure you that this will make this wonderful cut dish even more vibrant. Skål. Skål for møn. 